welcome back everyone to another video and so in this one let's take a look at some of the performance benchmarks on android for the Keras vim so the first one we'll be looking at andrew bench now this is an emmc storage benchmark and according to the documentation this particular board has a emmc 5 device uh, storage on board but uh, the read and write speeds aren't that interesting we see a sequential read of 512 megabytes per second sequential write at around 38 megabytes per second and random read and write at 4031 iops and 970 iops respectively now this is not extremely great uh, especially comparing to some modern boards with a much better emmc but definitely it's much much better than running uh, it off an sd card so yes emmc does provide a certain edge over the sd card but nothing like uh, an ssd can do so uh, let's move on to our next benchmark being geekbench 4 now here we can see our single core score at around 573 and multi core score at around 1616 now again this is nothing very very impressive but i'd say it's much much better than something like a uh, raspberry pi 3 and a banana pi m64 and considering the cost it's actually at par so um of course the extra 300 megahertz per clock per core does uh, provide an advantage to this board over both the raspberry pi 3 and banana pi m64 so moving on to much interesting things we have untutu and i'll leave you all with the test running uh, so that you can enjoy the test uh, of course this would be mostly graphical and uh, once that is done i'll come back and we'll take a look at some more results And we come back at a score of around 32,960. I'll just call it 33,000. Now it's far better than Banana Pi M64, which did a score around 26,000, mostly because it has a slightly better GPU and a much higher CPU clock, as well as if I'm if I remember correctly, a much higher RAM clock. Uh, and uh, Raspberry Pi never really seems to finish this test properly so uh, we'll leave that one out but apart from that it is great for um, mid-range gaming and stuff like that and of course throughout the test if you would have noticed the cpu didn't uh, reach anywhere above 80 degrees celsius so which is quite comfortable and of course the clock speed also remained consistent throughout the test and uh, i did test that many times and the score was around the same 
so um of course it's winters now and um i'm not really sure how hot it would get in the summer uh, that is something we'll need to test but it de definitely needs a fan if it's going above 65 degrees celsius which it easily does so if you are planning on buying this particular board i'd recommend get an accessory uh, a fan accessory which is officially available check it out on their website uh, all the links will be down in the description and i will see you all in the next one and thanks for watching